Hey, what's up, everyone? How- oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Great start. How are we all doing? Uh, back with another video. Um, this is the video what I put up last time, but the audio was botched on it, and I just couldn't fix it. Well, without it sounding like really quiet or either really loud and like it blowing your ears. Crazy, didn't it? Yeah, but um, in a way, I'm kind of glad that we're re recording it because I don't know how much I took from it the first time. Yeah, I feel like you, you try and concentrate on these ones, don't you? So mm. it's like... From what I remember, it's by far the best episode yet. I didn't struggle as much with this one, but I can't remember the content okay, because so I have a sieve brain. Yeah, it's probably good that we're watching it again because I think when we done it, then we went straight into the oversimplified because he'd done a new yeah, video. Yeah, so we lost this a little bit, didn't we? Yeah, but let's get back into it regardless. It's only six minutes, so... Uh, We'll try not to talk too much. The legendary. You know, whenever I want to feel truly disgusted, I usually take a look at a map of Italy from the 4th century. Gauls to the north, Greeks to the south, and an unholy mix of Etruscans, Umbrians, and Samnites in the middle. Absolutely disgusting. And it is with those fucking Samnites where the wars for Italy's fate would start. They lived in the Apennine Mountains, often raiding the lower plains of Campania and taking cities like Capua. Rome went to the extra mile to civilize those savages, but couldn't reach the hill tribes. This disparity was a spark of the first Samnite war. Capua couldn't defend itself, so called in Rome, whom easily broke the Samnites. Night siege, placing a garrison of plebeian soldiers in the city. Yeah, you saw it coming. Capua eventually revolted against Rome, and the plebs soldiers took the opportunity to demand higher pay. Now, it wouldn't have been a problem had it not started a Latin rebellion with it. The Romans were forced to stop the war, rushing back home and crushing the Latins near the Vesuvius, using the Samnites as meat shields at that. If you're asking how the Samnites could be dumb enough to accept- I've just noticed that he's got a pair of balls on his armor. Oh my god! <laughs> don't know why I was looking there, but... Except this, it is because you haven't met one. With peace restored, the Romans began granting citizenships left and right to the Latins, using them to build colonies for their south, even crossing the border with Samnium. They wouldn't stop complaining over it, but the Romans couldn't give two shits about it. And then we have Neapolis, a Greek colony, in case you were wondering why it's such a shit city today. <laughs> Itching for war, the Samnites placed a garrison in Neapolis, agitating it to attack the Roman colonies, thus starting the Second Samnite War, getting us to the first Roman hero of today, Quintius Fabius Maximus Rullianus. He led his men to victory during Samnium, while Neapolis fell to Rome and the consuls led the legions further into enemy territory. Getting so wrecked in the war, the Samnites started pleading for peace, and just before the consuls could respond, they were surrounded, stuck within the Apennine Mountains. The Romans tried carving their way through, but the endless hordes were too much. To save their men's lives, the consuls surrendered. The Samnites relished in their deceitful victory, stripping the Romans of their weapons, walking them under the yoke, and taking their <laughs> lands. With such a humiliating defeat, it was time for a change. So far, the Romans had used the phalanx, invented by their Trojan ancestors, but it wouldn't do anymore. With the unparalleled intellect of Rome's greatest minds, they substituted the phalanx with the brilliant maniple system. Now, the legions were divided into 120 men strong maniples, organized sparsely to better navigate rough terrain. In front lay the hastati, the official plebeian meat shields. At the center, the principes, where the experienced patricians put up their real effort. And behind were the veteran triari, the elite alpha males used only when truly needed. Now, back in the war, the Romans were attacked by the Etruscans, whom were promptly obliterated by Rulianus. The Samnites in turn were all kicked out of Campania, suing for peace. Rio this time. Victorious. So this is like really like the foundations of the Roman army operating as the Roman army did. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or for like other Rome total players, just how it is at like the first half of the game. <laughs> You're obsessed. <laughs> oh, actually, it's just such a great game. <laughs> um, I don't understand that either. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, it's not an easy game to grasp. Once more, the Romans cemented their victory by building the Appian Way, a road that led to Rome, the first of many. But Did you say anything? Because yeah. I need to know whether to edit it out. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, basically, our neighbour left their keys in the door. Um, that's so unprofessional. I'll probably just edit it out anyway. Okay. The Romans cemented their victory by building the Appian Way. Whoa. No. A road that led to Rome, the first of many. But success does breed jealousy, <sighs> Sorry, lots of it, equally shared by the Samnites, Etruscans, Umbrians and Gauls, all uniting in a coalition to make Rome burn again. Camillus might not have been around anymore, but you know who was? Cornelius Scipio oh, no, Barbatus, yeah. the first of many as well. Admittedly, this one didn't do too much. Him and Fulvius did kill some barbarians, but it's the next year's consuls who get the real fame. Back to Flavius Maximus Rullianus and his friend Publius Decius Mus. Rullianus did his specialty, devastating the 
Etruscans, while Decius did the same with Samnium. The war culminated in the Battle of Sentinum, where Decius and Fabius led the legions against the Barbarian Coalition. The Romans charged furiously at the enemy, barely using their pretty base. Wait, broken down how the army operates yet? No. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you know when like you just remember like specific parts of the video, and I thought like. Where Decius and Fabius led the legions against the Barbarian Coalition. The Romans charged furiously at the enemy, barely using their pricky pace. As the battle raged, the left flank began to waver against the ceaseless Gallic spam of chariots, <laughs> being too cowardly to actually fight on the field. Seeing the danger, Decius led a suicidal charge against them, sacrificing himself to buy time. Given the opportunity, Fabius sent half of the Triadi to save the left flank, and the other half to rout the Samnites. As they fled the field and the Romans set pursuit, Fabius sent the Triadi to surround the Gauls, slaughtering them all. Retribution for the sack of Rome, which will only be fully avenged in the centuries to come. Oh, how I wait. Triumphant a third time, Rome annexed all of central Italy, now the master of the peninsula, with two exceptions. Those being the Gauls up north, whose time will come, and the Greeks down south in Magna Grecia. The resulting few years of peace ended soon up. You know, it's crazy, because it's very rare that Rome went into wars and battles with numbers on their side. So, I mean, all... I thought they had big armies. I know they had big <clears throat> armies, but... For, some, for whatever reason, I remember when we were learning about their invasion of like, Britain at the top of Britannia. Yeah. Like, we would always attack in just stupid numbers. Obviously, on not in formation or anything, and just charge. Like, just I, pure force. Yeah, I think it was the Battle of Lon Londinia, like London. Mm. And I swear we had like a quarter of a million people, and the Romans only had like 25,000, and they beat us. Like, because they were just holding off choke points in the city. I, I feel remember. like back in the day though, I mean, I don't I don't know how to word this. Maybe like Romans were harder than we were back in the day. I think it no, I think it was just their organisation. Do you think? Like we used to just run at them, do you know what I mean? And they'd just be like We were probably like cavemen in comparison. Well basically, yeah. <laughs> like when you see old pictures of like old Britons who are just like running to battle topless with like blue paint all over them and the Romans just had like actual armour and tactics and Yeah, they had know. an actual plan, we yeah. just had attack. Yeah. After. For while Rome was mediating a dispute in a Greek city with their navy, Tarentum completely chimped out and attacked them over some ancient maritime treaty or some bullshit excuse. Surely, the Greeks in Tarentum weren't stupid enough to deny paying the reparations, right? If you're asking that, it's because you don't know one. Sure enough, war it was, and Tarentum immediately pleaded for help from mainland Greece. Now, I won't waste your time with the utterly insane shit-flinging mess that was Greek politics by then. Safe to say, there was a kingdom called the Pyrus, led by a Greek king named Pyrus. He had 20,000 Greeks. Greeks, 20 Indian war elephants, and nothing to fucking do. So when he heard Tarentum bitching, off he went to Italy. The tricky thing is, is that <coughs> Paris's army was all equipped with top-notch equipment that they looted from Trojan ruins, managing to put up a fight with Rome at Heraclea. But once they started to lose, off went Pyrus, spamming his elephants until forcing a victory. Yeah, victory. The Why kind you where you suffer... Doing that out of boredom. Like, you don't have a motive, you don't have a reason. You yeah, just want to get involved. Yeah, other than to help, like people that you've never met it's yeah. just like yeah I'll get a war but it's so funny when you talked about just spamming the elephants because it is such a cheat code just having fucking an army of elephants run at infantry I don't know if you could train an elephant to be in the army ah, I don't know I if you can train them but you can like stomp that's it you can, you can charge them in a manner which they're like they're used to doing I guess yeah I don't know but I think the Romans figured it out pretty quick though Massive like casualties and can only win by spamming living tanks in a battle. Call it a Pyrrhic victory. Pyrrhus did live to his Greek genes though, sacking and genociding every shred of civilization he could on his way to Rome. He took one good look at the serving walls and fucked off to Ascalon, where he met with the <laughs> Romans again. He was about to lose, but then spammed his elephants and forced a retreat. At least he had admitted this time that one more such victory and they were fucked. Maybe that's why he decided to fuck off to Sicily. No one really knows. Killing Greeks was simply much easier, I suppose. He did fight Carthage while over there. But I'll save my hatred towards them for the next video. <laughs> Once done in Sicily, Pyrrhus decided to sack an Italian temple of Proserpina, Persephone, in barbarian speech, sending the ship with the loot home, only for Jupiter to bolt it. Some divine justice at last. After everything that happened, Pyrrhus actually. <laughs> I, I think it's, I may have said this like the last time. We, oh no, it was a different video entirely. But. It'd be hard not to believe in gods and that, innit? When you got such shit look like that. Yeah. Like, you're just on your way, like... How many coincidences? Yeah. I think I just coincidences? Get... Coincidences, yeah. You just get hit with a bolt of lightning and lose, like, a lot of your troops. And you're just like, ah, 
Must have pissed someone off, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Only for Jupiter to bolt it. Some divine justice at last. After everything that happened, Paris actually returned to Italy. Maybe he was hoping to force another victory. I'm sorry, victory. But his cheese strats were already figured out. Getting kicked out back to Greece. Victorious, uh, what, fourth, fifth time? Yeah, the Latin word counts. A fifth time, Rome annexed the Greek lands of Magna Graecia, now bringing civilization to almost all of Italy. Quite a bloody chapter in Roman history, but you've seen nothing yet. For the next time, we will cover the Punic Wars, where Dido's curse goes into full effect. I'll see you then, plebs. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> I love the way he does his videos from like the viewpoint of a like a Roman noble or a high-ranking noble. Like that, the way he addresses yeah. like even the viewer. Yeah. What he talks about like. He holds a good position, doesn't he, really? Like, I have a question. Go on. So, back in the day then, mm. how would they have had boats strong enough to carry 20 elephants? Would they have had a boat each? Oh, yeah, there wouldn't have been, yeah, I can't imagine there'd be more than two elephants in a boat. Like, it'd be troops and an elephant. Like, they'd have like an arc sized boat, so the, the amount of weight on the boat wouldn't affect it that much. Yeah. Can an elephants arc. swim if they sank? Not in a sea. Oh. No, I, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know why. I just, as soon as I thought, <laughs> heard elephants, I thought, that's I never, weird. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think about the logistics behind it, like how to actually move the animal. Hannibal brought them yeah, over. Hard work. Hannibal took them over the mountains, so I imagine getting them on a boat isn't that hard compared. See, I would have never thought an elephant could climb a mountain. Well, neither did the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I, guess, I guess we'll learn about that. Um... And if it, well, he he addressed Carthage, so I imagine that will come up pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that an actual that a minute comment? Ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I don't get a uh, a comment saying "kill yourself" on this video, then I haven't done it right. <laughs> right, and then we'll record the next one. Well, we've already got the next one recorded, but we'll release it tomorrow just so it's all in order. And yeah, I don't want to get mixed up. Right yeah, then. do it all nice. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. I never know. It's hard to pause this video and talk into it. I say it at the end of every video, but yeah, yeah, now I feel the, like you just get sucked into it, don't you? Yeah. Now that the conquest of Italy is done, I feel like it starts to get really exciting because then it starts talking about Rome as we know it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than the forming of Rome. It's always it's, yeah. It's easier to relate to it as you kind of recognise it, isn't it? Yeah, I really didn't pre appreciate the time in between Romulus and Remus. And it already being a functioning republic. Like that whole time of them actually conquering Italy, I just didn't appreciate whatsoever. Like, I think it was. I was so gay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hard though because I, I, I so wish it's such a shame that like the other videos weren't at this pace. Because I enjoyed what I gathered from the other videos, but mm. I feel like I would have obviously been able to enjoy them a bit more if they were all like this. But... Yeah. Well, at first, I, at first I thought it was like an editing style that he went with. Mm. But then I thought it also might be a pacing issue where it's yeah. hard to slow down the whole video and keep the audio on track as well. So maybe yeah. it's him just kind of learning as a YouTuber. I mean, he's learned pretty well because he's got like 121k subs. But, um, One day. <laughs> I wonder how many videos he's got in general. We'll have a look. But um, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, sorry about the runoff in the middle of it. Uh, <laughs> I will have to check that though. So if you didn't, do well enough I'll have to edit you out you know that's okay <laughs> I'm only joking <laughs> um, but peace out uh, like and subscribe all that good stuff and see you tomorrow